Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're looking at how to attach tops to legs, frames, and other designs. Let's dive in. So first off, we have to understand where is the problem. So imagine this is your tabletop. The interesting thing about wood is it really doesn't expand and contract lengthwise, at least not in a measurable amount. However, across the tabletop, the wood will expand and contract across the grain. I have several videos on wood movement. I'll try and leave links to those down below. But just understand that across the grain, wood expands and contracts. Lengthwise, it doesn't. So if I join a board that goes across this board will not expand and contract lengthwise, but this tabletop will expand and contract. So we need to be able to let this slide on top of this. Otherwise, as it tries to shrink, you'll get cracks. As it tries to expand, you'll get pop-out joints. So you need to be able to let the top slide for whatever structure you put underneath it. So if this is the underside of our table, normally you have a skirt that then attaches to the tabletop. So you'd have a board running vertically around the outside perimeter. This will then stiffen the top so that the top doesn't want to warp and bend around. And for this board, it's not a problem because this board is going to want to expand and contract this way, not this way as well as the top will not expand and contract this way. So there isn't going to be a structural problem. I'm not gonna have the top expanding and contracting differently than this board will. So these two, I can just lock that down into place and it won't have a problem. The problem is when a board goes across the grain, then you're running into problems. This needs to be able to slide on this. So you cannot structurally attach this in a stiff manner. If I were just to glue this down, eventually it would probably break the glue along the joint and I would have it shearing out. Now, sometimes what you do is you glue it right here in the middle and you let the outside expand and contract out from the middle. So it's attached to the middle and the outside can expand. And that works okay, but one point of glue is actually kind of weak. So one of the oldest and most practical and most traditional ways to attach a tabletop to a base is with screws and hardware. I know that really goes against a lot of the fine woodworking dogma. Screws and hardware shouldn't be in the work. You should use all joinery to do it. Uh, but if you go back and look at a lot of the historical pieces, they had screws to go. And before they had screws, they would use nails. And why would they use screws? They're so cheap and they're so junky. Why would you want to put this into your work? Well, historically, screws were among the most expensive and valuable things you would put in your woodworking. It was not uncommon to hear about a building that was being demolished, and rather than saving the wood out of it, they would burn it to the ground so that they could remove the screws, hardware, and nails from the building, because those were the most valuable pieces in the whole building. The same thing went with historical furniture. Now, the easiest way to put a screw in is to drill all the way through the board, and you need a long screw, and it goes into there, and that's, that's kind of a waste. It's a long screw. It's a lot of expense for it. So how do I put a shorter screw into there? Well, I could countersink it so the head goes all the way down, and the screw is way down in here, or I could do a pocket hole. <gasps> We think about pocket holes as cheap, junky um, things that are, ooh, yeah, you don't do that unless you're a beginner woodworker. They're just the easy way to do it, and they're not going to stand up long. But in all honesty, pocket holes are very traditional and very old. They just didn't happen to look like this. It used to be that the bits were drilled with something that looked like this. And yes, this is an antique pocket hole bit from over 100 years ago. They would cut holes that would look something like this, and they are pocket holes, the old way to do it. You could also just carve a pocket hole, something rectangular and simple, and I've got several videos on doing both of these. Very historical ways to attach a tabletop to a frame. It seems very sacrilegious to use hardware and pocket holes on fine furniture, but in all honesty, it's a really good way to go. The screws will give you that little bit of flexibility to allow the wood to move around. They don't harden fast lock it down, so the screw in its little bit of a hole can move around as the wood needs to move. It is a very good way to do it. But I know there's a lot of people out there that pocket holes just have such a bad rap, they don't want to use them. So let's look at a couple other ways. The other method that I use quite a bit are figure eight clips. I know it's another type of hardware, but they're a little bit more of a delicate hardware. Uh, they have a little bit more of a ooh, je ne sais quoi to it because it's not just a screw, it's a figure eight and two other screws. 
but they work really well and they do give you a little bit more movement than a standard pocket hole. So if you're working with a really wide table, a figure eight screw might be the way to go. Let's take a look at one on my dresser. Here you can see two of the figure eights I have on the dresser top to the frame. One of them is right here and one of them is there and they're countersunk into the top support just a little bit so you can put a screw up into the top and a screw down to the bottom so that they can move as the top expands and contracts. And for those of you wondering from years ago, yes, wood on wood slides actually work really, really well. Look at that, nice and smooth and sliding in and out. That's what I like, wood on wood. They actually work really well. And when it comes to attaching your tabletop to structure, there are really a thousand different hardware ways to do it. And every one of them has their own pros and cons and different people like their different things. So when it comes to attaching something cross grain, think about hardware. It's actually a really good way to do it. Now that being said, if you are a purist and you really don't like the idea of hardware, there are a bunch of other ways to do it, but they're gonna take more work and uh, they may or may not be as fun. Let's look at the first one that comes to mind. The first one in my book is a sliding dovetail. This piece actually has a dovetail that runs all the way along it and out the other side. And this will allow this board to expand and contract on that dovetail. So this can slide in and out when this board does not. It works great, it is a functional joint, it is incredibly strong, but the problem with this is you have to cut a long sliding dovetail. And if you're looking at like a three or four foot wide dining table, that's, that's a lot of sliding dovetail to cut. But it can be done, and it's done without any hardware, and you can say, ooh, this table was made without hardware, it is very cool. And indeed, it is very cool. Sliding dovetails are incredibly cool, but it's a lot of work. I know that's a little bit crazy coming from the hand tool guy who likes to sharpen things on sandpaper on the floor. <laughs> Another fun method is if your top is very heavy, just let gravity do it. There's no actual reason to attach it down. Maybe put some locating pins up so it doesn't slide around, and I did that on both of my desks and my dining room table. Let's take a look at that one. So in this case, I have a huge slab top table. And if you wanna see this, I have a whole series on this one as well. But in this case, all I have is gravity hold this in place. This will not move side to side uh, because there are a couple pins, but the only thing keeping it down is 600 pounds of gravity. But when I lift up the table, you can actually see there's a couple pins that are locating it that go from the top into the base. And those will stop the table from moving side to side, but gravity is all that holds the top down. Now I just looked at some of the very basic ideas and these are the ones that I have used quite a bit. Uh, they're generally the ones that I go with, the figure eight, the pocket hole, the sliding dovetail, or just the locating pins. I, I generally pick from one of those four. There are very few times where I, I have something different. As long as you allow for the expansion and contraction of that top, especially when working with really big tabletops that might be three or four foot wide, there's a decent amount of expansion and contraction across that top. You just have to keep that in mind. And there are thousands of ways of doing it, and I haven't even touched on 99.9% .9 of them. Those are just the four methods that I use the most. As with furniture building, there is no best way. Every top is different, every application is different, every project is different, whether you want, you, you want to say that you're doing something completely without hardware, or you're just looking for the most simple, effective way that is good to go, there are lots of different options for you. Or if you're just looking for the pocket hole that works really well, is historical, and is all you need, then you know, go for that. But there are lots of other ideas out there, and I'm sure that you have some that I didn't mention. I'd love to hear those. Put those down in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your idea. How do you attach pocket holes? How do you attach tabletops to the base? Uh, it's a very interesting topic, and there are thousands of ways to do it out there. And most of them are really, really good as long as you allow for the expansion and contraction of the top. Just understand, your top is going to get wider and skinnier as the year progresses and humidity changes. So plan for that and have a little bit of fun. Try something different, learn a new skill. It is a lot of fun in the wood shop. If you think I missed something or think there's something I should talk about, please let me know that down in the comments down below. Also, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of the patrons on Patreon. Everyone scrolling over here on the side, they are the ones literally keeping this channel going. So thank you for that. Also, if you'd like to become a member, you can click that little join button down below and that does help out the channel as well. We have special perks for both members and patrons and lots of other fun things going on. So if you'd like to find out about that, uh, there's links to that down in the description or click the little join button. I think that'll about do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. How do you top that? A video about tops. <laughs> Did you hear what he said? He said pocket holes are as good as sliding dovetails. Tar and feather him.